Good evening, everyone. Thank you for joining us today for how nutrition plays a powerful role in your child's success. We're really excited to get started, but we are going to give it a few more minutes until we start the broadcast. So if you could just hold on a couple minutes. We'll be back to begin the webinar. Thanks. Hello, thank you for joining us today for our webinar, How Nutrition Plays a Powerful Role in Your Child's Success. We've had such an overwhelming response to this webinar, so we're really excited to get started. I'd like to introduce Holly Larson. Holly is a registered dietitian, and she's our director of nutrition for our Brain Balance Clean Eating Program. Hey, Holly. Hi, everyone. Let's get started. Um, I do want to let everyone know who has joined you are on mute, so don't worry if you have any background noise, we won't be able to hear you. Please feel free to use the question section in your GoToWebinar panel box to ask questions throughout the presentation, and we'll answer as many as we can. If you'd like to let us know where you're joining from, I'd love to know. But with that, I'll say welcome to Brain Balance. You are in the right place to help your child succeed. As Victoria said, my name is Holly Larson. I'm the director of Balance 360, our nutrition program. And I work with three wonderful women to support all of our families with nutrition here at Brain Balance. So I'm so excited for the opportunity to share a bit about Brain Balance with you, as well as Balance 360, our nutrition program. Today, I'll be covering how nutrition plays a powerful role in your child's success. Brain Balance is a holistic program that helps kids who are struggling with academic, social, or behavior issues. Families come to their centers three days each week for activities to promote development in their child. And hello to California and North Carolina and New Jersey. Here at Brain Balance, we help children who are struggling with focus, relating to their peers, as well as children who are struggling with behavior issues. 
We also help children who are picky eaters, and that may be why many of you have joined today's webinar. Balance 360 is our proprietary nutrition program. It is one important piece of the Brain Balance program. Our nutrition program boosts each, each of our children's progress in program and beyond, helping to improve your child's behavior and focus. Tonight, I'm going to cover a lot of material. I am recording this webinar, and you'll receive a link to review the material later. Our goal at Brain Balance is to provide the very best in your child with our nutrition program is a huge part of that. We want your child to not be held back by learning struggles, low self-esteem or behavior challenges. And I know that's what you want for your child too, and that's why you're here. So today we're gonna to talk all about how we are eating as a nation, why these habits may be holding your child back, and what you can do about it. Let's start with these two topics. What is inflammation and leaky gut and how are they related? We are a nation of busy families. Overall, we are eating food that is far too processed. We're eating foods with more preservatives, chemicals, and added sugars than we've ever had before. And food companies can be really sneaky. Foods that can seem healthy can have ingredients in them that you'd never use at home. We are leading very busy lives without much time to cook food at home, eat dinner as a family, spend time outside, or simply relax and recharge. And I'd like to hear from you. It's time for our first poll. I'd like to know how often does your family eat dinner together as a family? I can say hello to Colorado, Indiana, Illinois, or across the nation. So most people have voted, I'll give it another second or two and then I'll close the poll. Hey, Cincinnati. All right, so we are across the board in how often we're able to eat home together. And the more the merrier, we're gonna cover a couple of tips. So this on-the-go lifestyle and poor eating habits leads to inflammation. And we're hearing a lot about that lately, but what is it exactly? Inflammation is the redness and swelling that we can see when we have an injury on our skin, for example. This inflammation is normal and has healthy response that enables our body to fight pathogens, the bad bacteria that might otherwise sneak inside and make us sick. Inflammation can actually happen anywhere in our body, including our gut. But unfortunately, we weren't meant to experience inflammation on a long-term basis. This is known as chronic inflammation. When our body is putting out fires around our body, normal everyday functions like digestion and absorption take a back seat. Chronic inflammation increases your risk for disease, including leaky gut and negative behaviors in your child. So leaky gut, you may have heard of this term too, but what is it exactly? Here we're zoomed way in to see a diagram of what a few of our gut cells look like. Our gut has a really tough job. We're trying to get the most nutrition out of our food without letting pathogens, those bad bacteria or toxins, get into our body. In a healthy gut, our food is broken down into teeny tiny pieces. Then they're small enough to be absorbed directly by the cells lining the gut. And that's what we're seeing on the left-hand side of this picture. Leaky gut happens when there are places in between the cells because they're not able to hold tightly one onto the next. And this leaves room for bacteria and toxins to sneak through, getting into our bloodstream and causing inflammation. And that's what we see on the right. The analogy I like to use is this is kind of like your child breaking through the line when playing Red Rover. Eating the wrong kinds of foods, including foods with additives, can cause leaky gut. In addition, feeling stressed all of the time, chemical additives, added sugar, and more can also cause leaky gut. Most people don't know this, but our gut and our brain are talking to each other constantly. A healthy gut is important for all health, including our mental health and your child's ability to thrive, both in school and at home. 
The reason many of you might be joining our webinar today is that your child is suffering from an inability to focus, hyperactivity, impulsivity, social or school-related anxiety, learning challenges, and more. The interesting thing is that chronic inflammation increases risk of all of these things, and that's something that surprises many of our parents. They don't know how strong that link is. What many of our families have found that by eliminating those foods that may be causing leaky gut and replacing them with unprocessed foods, we can lower inflammation in the whole body. Fruits, vegetables, fish, nuts, and seeds are all powerful tools to fight inflammation. So too are probiotics. So if you have a friend or a neighbor who's excited about sauerkraut or kombucha, they're actually on the right track. The trend of fermented foods is really good to promote gut health. And that's what we're gonna talk about now. What we're eating in the US plus goals to do better and tips of how to actually do it, even with your picky eater. For a lot of people, changing the diet can be a daunting task, but it doesn't have to be. Here at Brain Balance, we can help. In this section, I'll be discussing what the research says about nutrition and behavior and share some feedback from Brain Balance parents who have already been through the program. It probably isn't a surprise that we're not reaching our national nutrition goals, but it's amazing just how far we are from it. The CDC reported that in 2018, only 7% of children in the US eat the recommended servings of vegetables. That's less than one in 10. And I think we all probably know that vegetables are healthy and that we should eat them each day. So why are we struggling so much? There are a lot of reasons why it's a challenge for your child to eat vegetables. And many of our brain balance kids have sensory issues and maybe your child does too. Maybe your child is very sensitive to certain smells. Maybe it's the texture of certain foods that causes your child to become uncomfortable and act out. Fresh fruits and vegetables have a lot more sensory information. This means that asking your child to just take a bite might be sensory overload. Fruits and vegetables are a lot tougher than kid foods like chicken nuggets and macaroni and cheese, french fries and applesauce. Kid foods have a bland flavor and an easy, predictable texture that are easy for our sensitive children to tolerate. That's why they like them so much. They don't get overloaded. So I would like to launch our next poll. I would like to know if you consider your child to be a picky eater. Get just another second or two and then I will share the results. I am not surprised, but in our audience, we have a lot of picky eaters. It's really common and something that we see with our brain balance kids again and again. So we know we need to eat more fruits and vegetables, but how much is enough? Let's take a look at what the goal is for your child according to their age. So here we have three different groups of what does a day look like with enough fruits and vegetables for breakfast, lunch, dinner, and snacks. I'm wondering if you think this is more than you would have guessed or less than you would have guessed or about what you would have thought. A lot of parents think this is more than I would have thought. All right, so let's talk a little more of the science of why fruits and vegetables are so important. One of the reasons is that they are an excellent source of fiber. Having enough fiber each day means we are cultivating gut health. Fiber is actually the food for the good bacteria living in our gut. And when our good bacteria are well fed, just like us, they are happy and they actually provide fuel for us. So when we take care of our gut bacteria by giving them fiber, they take care of us too. If it were easy to reach our goal for fruits and vegetables, we wouldn't be struggling. Remember, only 7% of children in the US eat the recommended amount. Here we have a graph from health.gov that is kind of has a lot going on. But what I'd like to draw your attention to are the two colors of bars. 
The orange shows when we are having too little of a food group and the blue is meeting the goal. What I'd like to draw your attention to is how much we are missing the mark with fruits and vegetables, the top two bar. And at the bottom, it shows how much we're eating processed foods by all of the added sugar. In a bit, I'll be sharing my top tips for increasing your child's overall nutrition, including how to increase your child's fruits and vegetables. So stick around. I even have tips for picky eaters because I know how often that's a significant barrier for our families, and that's what you just told me. So let's switch gears and take a deeper look at how nutrition can influence health and behavior. Can you believe it? A study published in the British Medical Journal two years ago found that we are eating 10% of our total calories from added sugars. Yikes, this is not the sugar that's naturally occurring in fruits and vegetables, rather sugar that is added to foods as they're processed. Things that appear healthy are often loaded with sugar. It's really surprising when you start to read labels. Not only do processed foods have too much added sugar and other additives, they're also way too low in vitamins, minerals, and fiber. Nutrient deficiencies are surprisingly common. We see this trend globally as well as in the US. Once parents implement healthier eating habits at home, they begin to notice a positive change in their child. Nutrient deficiencies such as zinc and iron can impair learning. We can measure differences in children when we group them by their nutrient status. Those who are low in iron and zinc have lower standardized test scores and reading scores. Iron deficiency is the most common nutritional deficiency in the world. In infancy, iron deficiency can slow brain development and lead to diminished school performance. Iron deficiency can lead to restlessness and abnormal muscle movement. Research, including a study from this year, demonstrates that children with the most severe iron deficiencies were also the most inattentive, impulsive, and hyperactive. If your child is unable to sit still because of their nutrient deficiencies, it will be much harder for them to focus and learn. Remember how we talked about gut health and the gut-brain connection earlier? Adults and children with ADHD have differences in their microbiome. The gut bacteria are talking to our brain through several pathways and therefore influences brain function and behavior. And different kinds of gut bacteria are saying different messages. The gut-brain connection is powerful. And our parents agree. They share their observations with us via our private Facebook group, as well as in anonymous surveys. Here are two such examples. Now let's talk about cooking and eating at home. Cooking at home is usually healthier than eating out, but we often eat out because we're busy and just don't know how to cook. We're really just not comfortable in the kitchen. But the more often children eat dinner at home with their families, the less often they exhibit depression, anxiety, and problems at school. When we eat meals together as a family, our kids tend to be healthier eaters, including eating more fruits and vegetables. Here at Brain Balance, we make this easier by providing menus and simple recipes to help you feel more comfortable in the kitchen and share ways to get your child involved. So now we know some of the reasons that healthy eating is so very important, but how to do it? How can we be successful with dietary changes when we're struggling with a picky eater? If you are ready to hear some tips, I'd like you to comment, let's go, and I will go forward with the tips. Awesome, you guys are ready. So my first comment is progress, not perfection. It is so common to think of nutrition as all or nothing. And as a registered dietitian, I see it again and again. We set expectations that are for perfection and they're not doable. If we were learning to play the guitar, we would not expect to be ready for a concert in just a week or two. And nutrition deserves the same patience. We are learning new skills and those take time to practice. Our current eating habits were not developed overnight and new ones will take time to establish. In your follow-up email, I'll be including our good, better, best guide every step forward is worth celebrating. 
So my first tip is to boost fruits and veggies by having a snack platter after school. I like to include a few different kinds of fruits and vegetables that are cut up, and a tiny bite is a lot easier for picky eaters. You can also include crackers or nuts or lunch meat if your child has a big appetite. And know that a lot of our kids love to pick up fruits and vegetables with a toothpick. Offering fruits and vegetables outside of the mealtime gives an additional opportunity to reach the fruit and vegetable goal each day. It also lets your child try new foods in an environment that feels lower pressure. And if they don't eat anything the first few tries, not a big deal. Dinner will be served soon. The cool thing is you don't have to spend a lot of time putting these together daily. Most of us simply don't have the time for that. But a lot of fruits and vegetables will keep well in a container in the fridge. So cut them up on the weekend and serve them during the week after school. My next tip is to pay attention to added sugar and other additives by comparing labels. We've learned today that added sugar can increase inflammation and increase risk of leaky gut and make it harder for your child to learn and focus at school. By checking the ingredients, read before you buy, you can reduce your added sugar more easily than you might have guessed. So in this example, the yellow label is regular applesauce that is sweetened. The white label underneath is unsweetened, and the difference between the two, ingredient-wise, is only corn syrup. The regular sweetened applesauce has 17 grams of added sugar. That's more than four teaspoons. So this may surprise you, but I actually love ranch dressing. So even this dietitian loves ranch. But when I do eat it, I try to look for one with fewer additives than this one. So here's an example of a salad dressing that doesn't have preservatives or artificial ingredients, and you can get it at your local grocery store. This means that I can enjoy my carrots and ranch dressing without worrying about inflammation or leaky gut. And if you're ready to get cooking, here is a favorite ranch dressing of mine. Ranch dressing is actually pretty easy to make and personalized to your own taste buds. It's a tasty dip to offer with fresh veggies on your snack platter. My third tip is to have water be your family's regular go-to drink choice. If you're dehydrated, it is really hard to focus. If your child doesn't like water, it's probably an indication that they're not drinking it on a regular basis. So here are some tips for increasing water. First, I would encourage you to stop offering other drinks like soda, juice, or sports drinks. And a quick point about sports drinks, they are way overused. Unless your kiddo is exercising for more than an hour, they really only need water. My next tip for increasing water is to use a straw. A lot of us drink more water when we have a straw. Um, keep a pitcher of water in the fridge if your child prefers cold water or have a special cup or water bottle that your child can take to school if they'll drink more water. You can give your child ownership of their hydration by asking them to check the color of their urine when they go to the bathroom. They may think this is really cool or maybe gross um, to report back to you, but the goal is to drink enough water to keep your urine pale yellow. I prefer this check for hydration because what we need from day to day varies. On some days we're more active than others and so our water needs will fluctuate. We are all really busy, I get it. But the more often you can turn off your TV, set aside your phone and share a meal together, the better your child will do at school and make healthier choices. Kids pay a lot more attention to what you say than to what you do. If they see you exercising, eating fruits and vegetables and reducing screen time, over time they'll mimic your habits. So let's think back, how did you answer our earlier poll? How many nights per week does your family eat dinner together? Let's make a goal for progress. Next week, can you eat dinner one more time than your average? That would be great progress. So I would love to know for our last poll, which tip is the most meaningful or what is the tip that you would like to try? The votes are pouring in. 
All right, so here are, I'm gonna close the poll in three, two, one. Most of us feel pretty hydrated, I think. So I think the tip that you're most excited about is the snack platter after school, dinner together more often, or trying more than one. It's really exciting. Baby steps lead to big changes. All right. If you are a parent struggling with a picky eater, if you're sitting here today and recognizing that your child has behavioral or physical reaction to the foods that he eats, we're here to help. Here at Brain Balance, we know that making changes to improve nutrition is a huge part of your child's experience with the whole program. When your child is not held back by poor gut health, inflammation, or dehydration, they excel in program. We also know that making changes when you lead very busy lives is not easy. That's why when you enroll your child in the program, you'll have access to an array of foods to make healthy eating as simple as possible. If you'd like to have a sneak peek at a few of our tools, type yes in the chat box. All right, let's take a look. So reading labels can take a long time, even for a dietitian. So for the most common products that our family shop for, we've actually done the work for you. I've spent a lot of hours in the grocery store reading labels and food packages and making lists of, of approved products to save you, our family's time. For example, we have quick guides that are product specific, like healthy bread, that you can use in your local grocery store. Reading labels can take a long time, but we've done the work for you. Would you assume that you have to do an expensive specialty store in order to have healthy groceries? If you do, you're not alone. It's a really common assumption that you have to shop at an expensive store to follow our nutrition program, and it's actually not true. There are many affordable options at the regular grocery store, as well as lower cost stores such as Costco and Aldi's. So here is one of our store specific guides with foods that are anti-inflammatory and promote good gut health. Here at Brain Balance, we believe that you can eat well, nourish your child's best health, and have fun. We show you how to truly enjoy foods from cookouts and 4th of July parties to quick and delicious breakfast ideas and even desserts. You can have fun, enjoy foods, and help your child to be their best, healthiest self. We show you how. And our parents agree. They observe the positive effects of the dietary changes in their child, and it's so fun to celebrate with our parents as their child takes their first bite of green beans or enjoys a new dip for their vegetables. With your child's enrollment, your family will receive three counseling sessions with our knowledgeable and caring registered dietitians. This includes one introductory group session that gives you the tools to get started with Balance 360, our clean eating system. Your enrollment also includes two one-on-one -on -one sessions with our three registered dietitians. For each session, you schedule with them at a time that's convenient for you, and you meet with them using your computer or just on the telephone. So you don't have to drive anywhere or worry about traffic. The families we work with find enormous value in the one-on-one -on -one time to ask questions and make a personalized plan. This is what makes the difference in creating healthy changes that last. The first step to understanding your child's struggle is our in-center assessment. We are offering a special. If you schedule your child's assessment by the end of this month, you're eligible for a complimentary 45-minute nutrition counseling session with one of our three registered dietitians. The details for this and a recording of this webinar is included in our follow-up email. We can't wait to meet with you. Okay, so today we have talked about a lot. We covered how our usual eating habits in the US increase the risk that your family is experiencing inflammation, leaky gut, negative changes in their behavior and their focus. We also talked about what brain balance is, including our nutrition program, Balance 360. We got to take a peek at a few of our tools that your family will have access to upon enrollment. I also gave you four tips to improve your family's nutrition starting today. Those included having a snack platter after school, reducing additives, maintaining adequate hydration, and having more dinners together. 
Remember, all of this information will be included in the follow-up email, so be sure to open it. And with that, we do have time to answer a few of your questions. Okay, awesome. <clears throat> Holly, thank you so much. Um, we have about five, maybe a little bit more minutes left for questions. Um, I'm going to begin reading them and give Holly some time to answer them one at a time. So if you want to go to the question section in the menu bar and type your question in, I'll be reading them from there. Um, if we don't get to your question, just wanted to make sure that everyone's aware. Due to time, we do have a special offer coming to all attendees by email, allowing you to schedule, as Holly just said, a one-to-one -one session with one of our dietitians. So please follow the steps in the email that you're going to receive after this webinar and contact your local clinic to set that session up, um, especially for those really personal questions or questions that have to do more with, with your child and um, are very detailed. I think you would really benefit from that one-to-one -one session. So, so I'm gonna start with some questions that came in earlier and then I'll start reading the other ones. So first, Holly, uh, we had a mom who asked, could you talk a little more about almond and nut butters? Should we only get freshly made or is jarred okay? And secondly, do you prefer cashew versus almond versus peanut butter? This is a good question. I actually love all nut and seed butters, whether it's sunflower seed butter, or almond butter, or peanut butter. What's most important to me is that they're not hydrogenated. Um, when you hydrogenate oils, that creates trans fats, and those are both unhealthy for your heart and for your brain. So getting the fresh stuff from your local grocery store, if that's an option, is one great choice, but there are also lots of jarred choices too. And in terms of which one is better, I prefer a variety because nuts and seeds have different nutrients in them. So having a variety over the course of the week or the month is best. Okay, awesome. Okay, secondly, um, we had this question a couple times, so I just want to make sure that I answer it for everyone who asked. Uh, will a PowerPoint of the webinar be available after this? We are recording this webinar, and it will be available as a recording, but not just not the PDF for the webinar itself. Um, next, Holly, a mom did comment that healthy eating tends to be more expensive, like organic. Um, do you five? Do you have any suggestions to a family on a budget? And I do believe you reviewed that at the end, but I thought maybe you could go through that information again. Yeah, absolutely. Um, there is no end to what you can spend at the grocery store, and the budget is a pretty common concern for brain balance families. So with your enrollment, we have a video about tips to save money at the grocery store. We have a quick guide, and it's a topic that you can talk to the dietitians about. I'd say my biggest tip today is to not waste food. On average, we waste up to half of the food that we buy, and that's literally throwing out money. So having a plan, not buying more than you need, um, using things that don't spoil, like frozen fruits and vegetables, are all ways to prevent waste. Good question. Um, this is my favorite question so far. Um, I believe this is from the son of one of the people who logged in today. So Jax, thank you for your question. Um, he wants to know what are Holly's two favorite meals to cook? Ooh, what a fun question. I love all kind of Tex-Mex food. I love doing taco salads and burrito bowls. And I also can't wait for the summer when I can put a bunch of food on the grill. I love grilled burgers and veggies and grilled peaches for dessert. I also love when my husband cooks those because then I get to just eat them. <laughs> yes, I remember when we did a, um, with all of the parents in our Facebook support group when we did Taco Tuesday, that was. That was a lot of fun. Super fun, yeah. Okay, so um, the next question would be, what if your child goes to after school care where they only provide processed food or snacks? usually with the Capri Sun as a drink, and how um, do I approach the after-school leaders to help us? Thank you, Rachel. Great question. So that's a pretty common concern, both at schools and at daycare, because those packaged foods aren't going to spoil and then they can buy them in bulk and they're not very expensive. So I think a lot of our parents have had success with reaching out with kindness and an education and saying, my concern about these foods are the added sugars and the dyes and things like that. 
could we switch to cups of water or bottles of water instead of the Capri Sun? Maybe we'll even save money. See if you can offer to help, provide some education about alternatives. Um, a lot of our parents pack lunch because their schools aren't providing very healthy lunches. And we do give a letter that the families can take to the child's school so that um, it's signed by me, a dietitian, to say that these are the foods that the child will and won't eat. That's awesome, Holly, thanks. Okay, um, next we had a few of very similar questions um, about dairy and gluten and how that plays a role in brain health. And do we think that, that eliminating those foods can help children if they're enrolled at brain balance? Yes. Um, part of our nutrition program is doing a trial with gluten and dairy being removed because a lot of our kids benefit from it. And it doesn't mean necessarily that they need to be off those foods forever, but those foods are more likely to be inflammatory. So removing them allows the gut to heal and rest, get the most benefit from program, and then try them one at a time to see if they are actually a good fit for your child. So that is one of the recommendations that we give for each of our families. Yes, okay. Um, how about getting fruits and vegetables in smoothies? Is that still helpful? Absolutely, you still have the fiber. So I prefer smoothies to juice, even fresh juice at home because juicing removes the fiber. Some of our kids, the texture for smoothies is tricky. And so for those kids, I recommend making a smoothie and then freezing it into a popsicle because that seems to be a more tolerable texture for our really picky eaters. That's a great tip, thank you. Um, next, my son has food allergies such as tomatoes, rice, and oats along with nuts. So it's challenging in food choices. That's from Angie. It wasn't a direct question, but I thought you could address that topic because I think it's something that comes up with us a lot in the families we work with. Yeah, we do have families a lot of families come in with very specific and complicated eating patterns because of their allergies. Some of our kids have sensitivities because of their gut health. So their reaction to food is more of a symptom of their gut health more than something that's gonna stick with them for their whole life. Um, but that's why we have our registered dietitian so you can meet with them one-on-one -on -one to find specific recipes and ideas that work for your family. That way you don't have to feel like you're figuring it out alone. Awesome. Um, another parent, Erin, is asking, she said she missed at the very beginning where you talked about the number of fruits and vegetables servings a child could have per day. So if you could just re-review that info, that would be great. Yeah, let me go back to that slide. Okay. While Holly's going back, um, we had a couple questions. One, do you have any centers in Canada? We do not have any centers in Canada, but we do have some centers in states near Canada, as well as we hear very often that we have families relocate um, over the summer or during a school break to be close to a brain balance center to put their child through the program. So I really encourage you to look up um, a center close to you and call that location from our website, which is brainbalance.com. Um, the next question was, do we have any centers in Fayetteville, North Carolina? That kind of makes me smile because my roommate from college is from Fayetteville. Um, <laughs> and I, I don't meet a lot of people from there. So anyway, the, we have a center in Cary, North Carolina. We have Raleigh. We have Piedmont Triad, which is opening very soon. And we also have Chapel Hill in North Carolina. We also have some centers in um, South Carolina as well. So I, again, I encourage you to go to the Brain Balance Center page and look up which center will be closest to you. Give them a call. Okay, Holly, sorry, you can go ahead with the fruits and vegetable servings. If you want. Um, I have it pulled up. Okay, great. Um, so we had a mom that said, this is a really great question. My son has autism. Do you think going plant-based will help? And how do I introduce veggies in a fun way? That's from Georgette. The most important thing is to know that our experience around fruits and vegetables involves a lot of tactile stimuli. So the smell, the texture, the temperature, the flavor. So any way that your child can just have an experience around a fruit or vegetable without having the expectation to eat it just yet. So that's things like having your child cook with you or be in charge of cooking. If it's a younger child, you can ask them to guess 
what spice jar you're holding. So we have a kind of a playful experience around smelling different herbs and spices. Um, going to the farmer's market together, reading books about farmers, whatever is age appropriate in a way that you can have fun around fruits and vegetables. Once we lower their anxiety and stress about it, then look for low pressure ways for them to be involved and have opportunities to try them without forcing it. I like to say force creates resistance. So you never want to force the issue. You just want to have opportunities for them to try it. That's awesome, Holly. We have a lot of questions that are very similar and I believe um, maybe we'll take this one and one more. Um, do you have a visual, visual checklist or a food journal to log and document if you've met the, da the daily requirements? I have a visual learner. I apologize, I just messed that up. The screen is moving rapidly with all your comments. <laughs> <laughs> um, we do actually have some charts and things for parents who enroll that you can print out one or for each day as that's useful for you so you can track eating and behavior. That's a great question. I love that question, actually. Yes. Okay. So lastly, um, what are indications of inflammation in your body? I love this question. Thank you, Padma. Good question. Um, one would be your behavior. There are also some blood tests, including C-reactive protein that you can see. Um, if your skin looks and feels healthy, that's an indicator that your body is healthy. But a lot of our kids have redness and bumpy skin and symptoms like that. Okay, great. Thank you. So thanks everyone for attending today. Again, we're just so thankful that you joined us tonight. Um, we, if we didn't get to your question, I really encourage you to call your local brain balance center and set up this one-to-one -one session time with one of our registered dietitians. As Holly said, we have four, including Holly. She's the head, the director of our nutrition department. Um, we really appreciate you joining us today. You will receive some follow-up emails from us. Um, We'll have the recording of this webinar as well as some offers for you and some next steps. Um, Holly, oh, Holly, do you want to just mention really quick the um, guide that you're going to be sending all the attendees before we signed off? Yeah, so uh, our email will include our Good, Better, Best guide. It will also include information about our promotion where you can meet with a registered dietitian and links to connect with your local center. Awesome. Right here um, is our website, brainbalancecenters.com slash locations. Yes, yeah, so you can scroll down as well as you can just put in your zip code right there at the top if you're uh, looking to contact your local center. We really appreciate you joining us tonight, taking time out with your family to um, listen to us as well as ask your questions. I thought your questions were really engaging and great, and we love your feedback. So um, thank you so much, and everyone have a really great night. Thanks, everyone. Have a great night.